Hey guys, Technivorous here. Today we are going to be doing our in-depth ultimate beginner's guide to slicing with Kira 3D Slicer. And let's jump right into it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is pop over to the Ultimaker website and download a version of Kira. The current version is 4.4.1. All you have to do is click this handy download button and it'll give you the option of getting Kira for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm running on Windows here, so obviously that's the version I chose and I have already installed it. Once you get it installed, it's pretty simple, just a package installer. You are going to open it up and it will take a couple minutes to load the first load. Subsequent loadings after that will be quicker and you're gonna pre be presented with a screen somewhat like this, except yours is going to have a option for adding in your printer and I can show you what that me that menu looks like it's gonna look something like this now if you're plugged in and you have the driver installed for your printer it might show up here under add a networked printer in our case we are not plugged in so we're gonna add a non networked printer Ultimaker lists their printers first it is their software so they try to highlight their stuff there and the list of printers and printer manufacturers has grown quite long so odds are your printer will be in here somewhere. We're gonna set this up for the Creality Ender 3 because it's a pretty popular printer. And we'll just hit add. It's gonna offer us a couple of settings and these are built in based on the printer that we selected such as the width, depth, and height. So the width and depth of the Ender 3 build plate are 220 millimeters. That is the X and the Y. The height is 250, so it'll print up to 250 millimeters tall. All this stuff over here in the print head settings, this is set by uh, Ultimaker in their end of the software, so don't touch that. Um, if you have more than one extruder, you can go in and change the number of extruders, and you might be kind of distracted or thrown off by this origin at center. You want to leave that unclicked. If you click that, it will print the model at the corner of your bed and not at the center, so it seems kind of backwards, but just trust me, go ahead and leave that unclicked. We're going to hit next, and now our printer is all set up. Before we bring in some models, let's take a look at a couple of things real quick. All right, so this is Kira 4.4.1. I can click on the right side here and bring down my print settings. It offers me options for the layer height, the infill, support, and adhesion. Now, these are the most necessary, the ones you're going to be using most often to adjust your print settings. So we're gonna leave that how it is for now. Now in Kira, you have three basic tabs. You're gonna have your prepare tab. This is where you're gonna import models, arrange them, adjust them, and things of that nature. Once you have them how you want them, you will slice them, and then you will be able to go into preview mode, which is showing nothing right now, but we because we have nothing selected. So um, normally in preview mode, if you have a model and it is sliced, it will show you the G-code toolpath, and basically, you can scroll through the layers. I'll show you that in just a minute. The last mode here is monitor mode. We'll be using this in the next video when we hook up to our printer and go into the in-depth slicing settings. But for now, we're gonna jump back to prepare. And we're gonna grab a model real quick, just something simple. And we'll go over the model manipulation tools. Now, the first one you have here is move. This is your translate tool. You can simply grab it and move it or you can grab the item and move it around in three-dimensional space. You can also scale the object. You can scale it dragging these things or you can set it to a particular scale. And uniform scaling is set to be default. So if I change it to 200% on the X, it'll adjust the Y and Z to be proportional. You can turn that off if you just wanna make one side longer. Not a big deal. The rotate now lay flat will lay it flat on the closest flat surface. The most common one is to use this select face to align to build plate because then I can click on a face and it will align it. Now it's grayed out because part of it is sticking off of the bed. So if I hit center selected model, it will put it back in the middle of the build plate. This option here is for if I need to reverse the direction of it and flip sides. That is the mirror, and then there's per model setting. So if I pull in two different models, I can change the supports individually for each of them. The other way to import a model is to go to File, Open Files, and go ahead and we'll just grab one here. This is a pretty simple little model. 
you can arrange a couple of them on here if you'd like. You can also right click, click multiply selected model, say I needed to print eight of these. So it's asking me how many copies, I need seven copies which gives me eight total. It will take them, it will place them all on the build plate. So that's pretty handy as well. As far as settings, let's talk about layer height. Now point two is pretty standard. It will give you a decently fast model and a good looking model as well. Although there will be some obvious layer lines in there. If I take it down to point one two, those layer lines are gonna be a lot less obvious, but it is going to add quite a bit to my print time. This printer is capable of printing all the way up to point four, and that would leave huge layer lines, very visible, but is good for a rough mock-up print as it will print really fast. As far as infill goes, 15 to 20% is your standard amount of infill, so leaving where, where it's at will not hurt at all. Now, as you can see, these models are pretty low and flat to the build plate, and there are no overhanging edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this again, just drag it in here. Normally, I would orient this by going to rotate and putting this part flat. That gives me less overhang. I only have to worry about this spot and this spot, okay? Uh, in the other orientation, all of this was gonna be overhanging at a 90 degree angle as well as all of this. So there would have been support built up through all of that. And instead, we can get a better model. Let me translate this over here by rotating it this way because we'll get less support, less support interface. So we're gonna click support. I will show that to you once it slices. It'll add some bars in down here. But before we do that, let's discuss this last setting real quick, which is adhesion. Let me turn on support here. Doesn't seem to want to turn on. There it goes. So adhesion, there's basically three different types. You can do a skirt, which will put a three to five layer perimeter or line perimeter around your model. This is for purging whatever's in the hot end and ensuring that it's flowing properly and applying properly to the bed. The next mode of adhesion is what's known as a brim, and it's basically a skirt. It does the same thing, except the edge of it prints all the way in to meet the edge of the model. So you will need to trim it away from the model when you're done, but the adhesion for the brim is amazing as it helps keep your corners from lifting on square models like this one. The last method of adhesion is a raft, and it'll print a three to five layer, uh, basically a card underneath it, a flat surface to print on top of and then you will separate the raft in the model from the bed then you will separate the model from the raft and what you're left with is a fairly flat surface although not nearly as smooth as if you were to print directly on a glass or pei bed now let's go ahead and slice this we're not actually going to print these it's just give you an idea of how the slicer works and the preview mode we're going to take a look at here so uh didn't take long at all it's telling us it's going to take three hours and nine minutes to print all of these pieces. It's going to use 21 grams of filament or seven meters. So basically, now we can go into our preview mode. And all of these blue lines you see here, these are support. So I can scroll up and down through the layers to see what my infill is going to look like and see what the path is like for each individual layer. Then I can scroll backward through that particular layer. As you can see now, it's putting down the support there. And this gives you a good idea of what your printer is going to be doing at each layer. So that is very good so far so well. As you can see, like I said, these overhangs here have support. There is no other support anywhere else. This is our skirt line and it is counting that as support. And down here you can see it says save to removable drive. That's because I have an SD card in. If you don't have an SD card in, it'll just give you the option to save the file. You can also save to your computer by clicking this arrow and hitting save to file. Now, there are other options that become available here. Say you have your printer hooked up, connected to monitor mode, you can print directly from Kira. That option will be here as well. Sometimes when you're hooked up directly and you want to save to the drive, but it assumes you want to print and it'll put print right here, you can simply click the drop down arrow and select one of the other options to save the file. Once you have that file saved to an SD card, you can go ahead and put it in your printer. 
and hit print from SD card on the printer and go ahead and start printing. That's basically the gist of it. We are gonna come back, I'll show you real quick. If you click custom, there are a ton of settings in the custom settings. And if there's one that you're looking for that you can't find, you can simply click the cog wheel there and type it in here. This is the spiralized contour mode. This is basically base mode for Cura. I have mine turned on already, but if you didn't, you would simply check the box and this is the tab it'll show up under. So if I go in here and find special modes, there you have it, spiralized outer contour. Obviously it's not turned on because I'm not printing a base, but that's how you find extra options. We'll go into this and go in depth over a lot more of the settings in our next video, but this video should have you pretty well primed and ready to print. That is gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful to you. If there's any particular topics you would like to learn about, feel free to leave them in a comment down below. If this video was helpful, please leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we do tons of 3D printing videos and we post pretty much every day. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.